everyone. We are back here for ne our next episode here of Between Two Teachers. And my name is Consuelo Lara. I'm Madeline Cronenberg. And we are coming to you from the sacred land of the Chochenyo Karkin Ohlone Native Peoples. Yes, we always want to pay honor to, to that fact. So today we have a few things to share with you and uh, the topic seems to be all about money. That's what's uppermost in everybody's mind. So let's get started with the big news. Okay, Let, let's start with, uh, um, with our ballot measures, which are all about money. And the two ballot measures that we are looking at um, right now, and I'm going to include them both, are Measure R, which is for West Contra Costa Schools. And uh, this week we've got the uh, uh, endorsement of um, Rochelle uh, Pardue Okamoto from the, from the El Cerrito City Council and also the mayor of uh, El yes. Cerrito, yes. Greg Lyman, yes. uh, and the San Pablo City Council. Yes, that was wonderful. That's so really there's a growing support for Measure R. And um, if you're yeah. interested in getting a Measure R sign, you can contact either of us. We've got, we've got them for you. You can have one just like this. And uh, the voting has begun. This is the interesting thing. We've received our ballots, and people who are early voters will be voting uh, this weekend or any time between now and uh, March 3rd. So um, take a look at your ballot measures. Uh, you can take a look at, at uh, our website, the Facebook page, and, uh, and learn more and more about uh, Measure R and the schools that it will help to um, renovate and uh, rebuild and repair. So that's measure R. Then there's uh, Prop 13, our new Prop 13, which is going, which is a 15 billion dollar bond statewide. And the reason it goes along with our measure R is that if we pass measure R, we will get a discount on rebuilding our schools. We'll be able to get some of the Prop 13 money, which is meant for school districts that pass bond measures and are willing to put up matching funds to the state to uh, rebuild and repair their schools. So that's Prop 13. It's not the old Prop 13 at all. It's a totally, every year you get a new set of numbers. So this is the 2020 uh, March Prop 13. Um, those are the, the two ballot measures. I wanted to just throw in a, uh, an event so that if you are watching this, if you're lucky enough to watch this tonight, Friday night, or before tomorrow, Saturday, you can attend the, uh, a, a big event for El Cerrito and for the West Contra Costa School District, and it's the California um, Dance Festival. And it's dance companies from all over the state that are coming to El Cerrito High tomorrow night at wow. 8 o'clock. Wow. So there are uh, university companies, there are elementary school companies, there are people flying in from San Diego, there are people coming in from Sacramento, oh, from San Francisco. Wow. It's a very major um, uh, performance that's put on uh, once a year, and this year it's at it's in El Cerrito. It's all over, travels around the state. This year it's at El Cerrito High at 8 o'clock. So uh, everyone is welcome to attend that. Um, the next thing, which is also uh, a, a national story. I just want to do a uh, couple of national stories. And this one was the Newark School Board. And I just wanted to point this out because it came out that the, Nas the Newark School Board is trying to limit public participation. And mm -hmm. there are lots of ways to do this. We always think that you know, there's only one way to do public comment. In fact, there are many ways. And so right now, the way they do public comment, and there are other, I've seen this with other school districts, and I just want people to know that this is possible. Places are doing it. Where you have to put your name in online five days before the meeting mm -hmm. to get into the queue to be able to be uh, a public speaker. Hmm. Totally different from the process of, of, of being able to just go over and get a card, right? Completely different. And um, it, 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 they uh, are now trying to limit that even more. And the reason is because, uh, same reason we all have, me meetings get contentious and meetings get too long. And they're trying to get their business done. But there's always this tension between what is enough public comment, what's fair public comment, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's been a big issue in Oakland, it's always been an issue here. 
it's an issue in, in any public jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. But uh, Newark is working on it right now. Mm. Interesting. And the only other two national stories, I just want to mention uh, the State of the Union. Uh, our State of the Union the other night, the President mentioned um, Education Freedom Scholarships. And uh, Education Freedom Scholarships are basically tax breaks. And he wants $5 billion, he and Mr. Voss want $5 billion to be given in tax breaks. And then if you are willing to uh, you, you get the, you get a tax break for $5 billion and take, take your money and offer a scholarship for a child to go to a private school to be homeschooled um, or to go to, uh, to uh, a, a, uh, any other school that charges money, tuition, parochial school. Hmm. And that's $5 billion that would then come out of the, 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 wow. the uh, government budget, right? which he says will not hurt schools. But there's no way it would not hurt schools because it will shrink yeah, yeah. the overall budget. And, and this is uh, consistent with his philosophy. I found a YouTube speech of his where he said, we have to dismantle that monopoly. And he was talking about public schools. Which he now calls government schools. And so that is his goal. And so charter schools are... Folks, that's the same thing that he wants to have. That's his philosophy. And charter schools are right in there. Exactly. So you can call it all kinds of things, but the bottom line is he wants to destroy public education. That's exactly right. And, and, so, and, and so it is Betsy DeVos. And with Betsy DeVos. Secretary yeah. that he has appointed. Yeah. Um, then statewide, there's the um, big news in, in Daly City where they broke ground for their, uh, for their teacher housing. So they're going to have 120 apartments for a teacher and classifieds and only. It's just for their teacher and classified employees in, um, in Jefferson Union, which is in Daly City. And they passed a bond, and the, which any district can do. This is something I think that hopefully this will be successful and other places will see, okay, this is very doable just because it hadn't been the practice before. We hadn't had the, the housing problem we had before. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's right. This is right. going to make Jefferson Union a very popular place. Right now they struggle to find teachers like we all do because it's yeah. so hard to live there. But now they're going to, they're going to be the place. That's a great idea. Oh, wonderful. Um, then there's Governor, Governor uh, Newsom and Mr. Thurman, so Superintendent Thurman, have uh, put in a new four-year requirement for four years of quantitative reasoning and math mm. in high school. Big issue, big issue, and, and Mr. Thurman gave a really good speech on it. I'll link to it in the uh, uh, in the details under uh, under under this episode. But really saying how it's important to do it, but it's not the only answer to solving the achievement gap. People who think, oh, the, the only thing that's missing is the fourth year of math. Yeah. That's it. Money is what's missing, which is what we're trying to talk about. <laughs> Money is the bottom line. That is what is missing: our resources. Um, they also want to. They also are thinking of not having PE testing for the next three years. The governor has recommended that, and it has to do with bullying. He thinks that there has to be a whole conversation around uh, um, bullying, and that PE testing and bullying are um, uh, go hand in hand. So there's been a wow. recommendation about that, wow. as well as the ethnic studies program, which yes, is yes. moving forward. Mr. Yes. Mr. Thurman is moving moving that yep, along. Yep, he is. All right. Yep. Um, and then we come to local, our local conversation. So I'll let you take over. Yeah, uh, a few things that are going on. I wanted to um, add another uh, supporter of the Measure R, and that is from the Kensington Outlook. It's a uh, community um, publication that's mailed to monthly to the citizens of um, of Kensington, and they are in big support of Measure R. Had a very nice article about it, so I just wanted to give a shout out to our friends in Kensington. So, um, yeah, the theme today is is money, and I think everybody remembers the cost of charter schools publication. Uh, for the West Contra Costa Unified School District, it came up with 
of $27.9 million yep. every year that we lose, our district loses, to the charter schools. And I'm, I'm very curious, like where and who is making that money? So when a few uh, meetings ago, uh, one of the charters came up, it was um, RTA, Richmond Technology Academy. Uh, it's an Aspire charter school. And I wanted to, and I noticed this line item that says rent. And over here it says $445,000 a year they pay rent. And so, of course, they would be using taxpayer money that they get through the ADA and is paying rent. And I wanted to know, who are they paying rent to? And they said, these are the individuals who were uh, administrators in that right. school, right? That it was Chamberlain. And so then that got me to thinking about... And that's not the foundation. That was Chamberlain no. Associates who yes. built the building and... Uh, Yes. And own the building. That's correct. That's correct. Not the family foundation, which is They're also owned by the same people, but a different entity. Yeah. So this is the corporation. It's a real estate, a, right. for a real estate corporation. And so I went up and I looked at all of our charter schools and I wanted to find out like who are, this. you can expect more uh, information about this because my investigation is going to be who are the landlords of all of these other schools and the i think the big money makers uh of course would be the aspire summit making waves and uh there's a few others as well there's some that we're the landlord so i want to make that comparison how much are we charging and then how much do these other uh real estate investors architects whatever and so I want to do more investigation on that uh, because I think that's the issue for us is that we have these landlords who are making a lot of money and people say the charter schools are not money makers, that they're nonprofit, but that's not true. And that's one of the things we want to bring to light is that there's so many rumors or so many ways that the truth is twisted so that you think a lie is the truth. And it is not true that they're nonprofit. There's it, it, it's big complicated. Profit. Which isn't to it say is that there isn't a, there is a nonprofit entity involved, right? They could have a nonprofit. Well, they have that status. They have that status, but but the fact is that there is all this money still rolling around yeah. that winds up going to their vendors, who now are not at all nonprofit. Chamberlain Associates Correct. is not a nonprofit operation. So they have a nonprofit status, but at the same time, they are making lots of profit from these charter schools. And I want to expose that. And all of this is public. There's no secrets. You know, I'm not t say, sharing anything that can't be found publicly. But what the problem is that most people don't even know that this is happening. And so that's one of the things I want to bring to light. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for me. How about you? Well, let's see. The, uh, the only other little thing, I wanted to do a call to action there's um, the NEA has a call to action this week, and it's on something called the windfall elimination provision. And what that is is for teachers who retire, who have had um, uh, years where they worked. This is going to be CTE teachers. The reason that CTE teachers are going to not going to are going to be upset when if you recruit them. Um, you're not allowed, you, you lose your Social Security money. Oh, geez. That's essentially what happens. That's essentially what happens. And it's called a windfall elimination because they feel getting both oh, would be is a windfall. Sakes. So there's, there are, this has happened, because it happened to me. I'm, I'm in the pool of people. Um, it's, uh, there is many, many, many hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of, of people who are in this pool. So uh, there's a, yet another bill that's... Uh, proposed in um, in Congress, and I'll link to it, and it's to address this issue, and it's proposed by any NEA is supporting it, so it's on their list, and they're doing a an action to try to support the elimination of this problem, and then allow these teachers to be able to, teachers and, and other uh, public employees, but mostly teachers, uh, to be able to um, uh, recoup 
Yeah, keep the money that they that earned. earned. Right, they you don't earned. get it. You don't get the money you earned. You earned that money. Yes. And you should have it. Yes. Oh, jeez. Yes. So, so it's that's all just another that. loophole that's out there. Yeah. So, um, but it's it, it's it's a big one. And and what I do is I follow the uh, the action alerts from the National Education Association, the American Federation of Teachers, and um, and the uh, National PTA and the California PTA for that matter. And that's where you get the list of, of things that are out there that people are really trying to pass. That's good. Right? And, and, that's good. and also CSBA. And those are things you post also, yes. so people, if they want to take that action. Right, and we post it on, on Facebook. So the alerts yes. are also on Facebook yes. and, and on Twitter, but definitely all on Facebook. Um, and on both, I put them on Between Two Teachers, I put them on my page, I post them to your page. Yes. So that people can... Yeah. Um, there are things you can do. There, there are, are things, things you can do. to do, right? And, yeah. and if you don't, this is the whole thing. They're not hard to do. Oh. And what, they, what happens is, I mean, really in the, in the um, bigger election, in the presidential election, we're losing. They're not talking about education at all, mm -mm. Mm -mm. right? It's been lost. And uh, just depending on what, there's so many things going on with it, um, but it, it doesn't look like education is taking center stage. Mm -mm. And that's a big problem. That is a big problem. It's a big problem. So, okay. uh, there we are. I know. Sometimes it's very depressing, isn't it? And so we try to make ourselves laugh so we don't cry. And here's one for you. What do you call a pig that does karate? What do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. See you next week. Bye-bye. Pork chops. <laughs> well, at least it may bring you a smile.